Acts 19. You're there by now, aren't you? Look then. I'm going to read a little bit more than usual. Just bear with me. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you, we compel you, by Jesus, here it is, whom Paul preacheth. And these were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priest, which did this. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But uh, who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. Jews and Greeks heard it and fear fell on them all. But the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used uh, curious arts, dark magic, brought their books together and burned them before all men. They counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Father, Savior, Healer, God, Lord, before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. For this day, thank you. For your power, thank you. And for the fact last night wasn't our last night, thank you. We ask that you do what only you can, heal and save and deliver. Bring high places down and make crooked places straight. Please throw your weight around and we'll tell the world you did it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen again. Have your seat for just a moment. And uh, <laughs> I got a few, got a few amens on the right side. Y'all, y'all looking at me over here like I owe you money or something. Huh? All right, and Corey, I done lost all my monitors. I want to preach for just a moment, simply from a subject, and help me get it out. Tell somebody, say neighbor, neighbor. the demons are asking you a question. I need help now. Tell somebody else on the other side, the demons are asking you a question. What an interesting scene we see here in the 19th chapter. The book of Acts, Paul is ministering in Ephesus and the chapter begins with him posing a question to some disciples that he meets on the road. And it is a critical question that I really feel resonates with our church in this season of outpour and revival that we've been in. And the question is simply, he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Uh, I, I know it's early in the message, but I got to ask you that question because the question still rings true. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? It seems that Paul is suggesting and implying for us to consider that this Holy Ghost that has recently been poured out earlier in this history book of the church is somehow important, essential, and necessary. He says this to what the Bible calls, interestingly enough, disciples. Some of you would say, well, hold on. If they have not received the Holy Ghost, how are they disciples? But what I love about this is that it shows us that every disciple still has a journey to walk out. And no matter where you are, you're not there yet. There's always, please hear this, more that God has in store for you. Can I just say that to you directly? God has more for you. No, Pastor, I've been in church for 30 years. That's good. We're proud of you and all through your years, but God still has more. No, no, Pastor, I come from a ministry family. Good for you. 
surprise, celebrate you, but God still has more. He's talking to these disciples and he asked them the question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They respond and say, we don't even know about this Holy Ghost. We haven't heard of such. What, what exactly is that? He says, don't worry, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll cover that and cross that bridge when we get there. But let me ask you this question. He says, how were you baptized? They respond and say, well, we were baptized unto John's baptism. And I love the wisdom that he uh, employs here because he does not tear down their experience. There's some of us that come from backgrounds and traditions that would have jumped at the opportunity to tell them how wrong they were. They would have jumped at the opportunity to tell them how much they've missed it and how off they are. But what I love about Paul is that the wisdom he shows is that you don't take away, you always add to. Yeah, he, he says, well, we, we, we celebrate what you did with John's baptism, but now that we have a revelation of who Jesus is, he takes them, and hear me, I'm in Acts chapter 19, I'm not in a denominational handbook, I'm not a reformational guide, the Bible says that he took them down and baptized them again, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. It's as if he wanted us to understand that there's a powerful parallel between being filled with his spirit and being baptized in his name. But look at what happens furthermore. The Bible says that he then moves on and verse 11 tells us that God is working unusual miracles through Paul. He's, he's doing creative things. So much so, you're going to like this. The Bible says that Paul is so anointed in fact that they take hankies and handkerchiefs that have touched his body and send them to the sick and the sick get better. I don't have a lot of voice here so I can't, I can't say it like I want to. I need you to help me say it. Look at someone and tell them, say neighbor, I want to be so anointed that anything that's been close to me can feel the power of God. Uh, you didn't hear what you just said. I, I, I'm talking to some of you, though, that are in a place where you want to be so anointed. I want to be so on fire. I want to be so connected that anything that gets close to me is going to have the residue of the anointing. In fact, I'm going to start giving people a disclaimer when the usher sits them on my row. I just want you to know uh, that if you don't want to be healed, don't sit next to me. If you... If you don't want to be done with your depression or your sickness or your anxiety or your fear or your poverty, if you don't want to be done with it, don't sit next to me because there's so much anointing on my life that anybody that gets close to me is liable to catch a miracle. You ought to just pass that down your road and say, neighbor, I'm anointed like that. I'm, I'm, anointed, I'm anointed like that. I'm, I'm liable to break out in a praise that gets everybody delivered. I'm anointed like that. I, I'm liable to go to shouting and dancing and get everybody free because what God has given me is contagious and anybody that wants it can get it. Hmm. Ah, he says, he says, he says that, that he begins to work unusual miracles and, and people are being healed. But then verse 13 walks us into the scene that we're preaching about this morning. Because in verse 13 we discover, hear this now, that there are some vagabond Jews that are walking around, trying, walking around, trying to get a makeshift deliverance ministry off the ground. And, and I don't want us to skip over the term term that Luke writes here and uses here, he calls them vagabond Jews, itinerant Jews. Vagabond, what an interesting word choice because vagabond speaks to a wanderer. Vagabond speaks to someone that has no roots. They are unsettled. And you know why that's significant? It's significant because uh, there are a lot of vagabond Christians walking around right now. You, 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 don't, you don't have to say, man, I brought two amens with me. I'll use them when you get Get quiet. There are some vagabonds walking around that have no roots anywhere. They have they have no stability. They have not made themselves accountable anywhere. They're, they're here today and there tonight. They are going wherever the wind and the trend and the fad is blowing them. But he says that they are trying to do fake deliverance using 
Paul's uh, life as inspiration. Now, the reason that this is important for us to realize, hear me clearly, church, is because we are living in an hour, hear me, where we have made deliverance ministry a brand of the church. Ooh, yep, uh huh. We have made deliverance ministry a niche market. We, I'm just gonna say it, have made deliverance profitable, and we have tried to present deliverance as if it always has to be spooky and it always has to be strange, it always has to be. Ooh, in order for deliverance to take place we have made it mystical and relegated it to only one sector of the kingdom and so we have created these silos where we operate as if if you want to be delivered you got to go to a deliverance ministry some storefront some 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 little corner of a room somewhere but I want to tell you that my problem with that is if the Bible is right and it is Every New Testament church is supposed to be a deliverance ministry. Oh, y'all not hearing me. You, you let somebody tell you that in order to be a deliverance ministry, you got to be small and you can't have excellence and you got to have wheelchairs and crutches on the wall and you got to have 14 names in your church name and international and deliverance. Yeah, yeah, you, you let somebody tell you that and there's nothing wrong with that if that's your expression, but I want to let you know that wherever the Holy Ghost is, deliverance is there. Can I preach to the heart of man in here today and tell you that I don't care what you are bound by or bound with or oppressed with or what you are facing or fighting or working with or struggling against. I want to let you know that even if nobody comes down and prays for you, throws oil in your hair, pushes your wig back, if nobody shakes you, tricks you, does a leg sweep, pushes you on the ground, can I tell you if you want it and if you receive it, deliverance is available to you right now <laughs> you, you didn't hear what I said you, you said oh pastor the next no deliverance is available to you somebody shout right now you can be delivered from perversion somebody shout right now you can be delivered from depression somebody shout right now you can be delivered from low self esteem somebody shout right now you can be delivered from your alcohol abuse somebody shout right now you can be delivered from crack cocaine somebody shout right now in fact just pass that down your road say neighbor if you want it you can get it tell them say right now right Hmm. Ah, he says, he says uh, to tell you that they are trying to profit off of deliverance ministry and the issue, go deeper, is that these are not just men, help me please, these are not just men, but the Bible calls them the sons of Sceva, the sons of Sceva. Sceva, who, who is Sceva? Well, the Bible informs us that Sceva was a Jewish chief priest there in Ephesus. He has uh, seven sons that are going around uh, uh, doing demon dash if you will They're, they are exorcists for hire and they the Bible says have essentially studied the work of Paul and they're trying to replicate what Paul does as the sons of the chief priests but here is the first problem I need you to get this here the first problem is they are trying to use power by pedigree Mm, yeah, I'll say it again. Power by pedigree. In other words, they feel that because they are the sons of the chief priest, that they ought to have enough to get the job done. They feel that because of where they come from and who they've been connected to, that they are qualified to walk in this level of spiritual warfare. But what they did not understand is that while they had a name, they did not have an authentic relationship with Jesus and I have to talk to you because there are a lot of you in this room in the online room in the church at large that feel that you can access power by pedigree you feel that because your mama was a district missionary or your auntie was an evangelist and your daddy was somebody's pastor and your granddaddy was a bishop and your cousin is a chief arch brother apostle y'all know we got some titles over here in the same divine church you, you feel that because your uncle was a this and your auntie was a that, then somehow you have access to power. But I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. You cannot make it on somebody else's relationship.
relationship, you got to know him for yourself. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody in here that thinks that your mama's prayers are going to be the thing that keep you and take you all the way to your destiny. Yes, I am only here. Many of us are only here because somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. But please understand at some point, you're not going to like it, but I got to say it. You've got to mature to the point that you learn how to get a print language for yourself. I wish I had a church around here today. You can't keep leaning on your pastor's prayers and on your elders' prayers and on the deacons and the minister's prayers because let me help you. There will be a situation that comes that you can't get them on the phone. you got to be able to reach at the phone in your bosom and call him up and tell him what you want. But can I tell you that there's good news hiding under that chiding and rebuke and the good news is I don't care who you are I don't care what you've done I don't care if you came from a good family or a bad family I don't care if you have money or none the good news for 10 of y'all that ought to shout right here is that no matter who you are God says I want to talk to you directly you didn't hear what I said can I tell you that that's good news because some of us feel that we don't have access to him but God is saying I want to know you for myself is there anybody in here that's just grateful that the God of the Bible loves you so much that he wants to have direct relationship with you you might as well help me preach this thing tell tell somebody you may not like me you may not call me you may not want to speak to me but tell him God loves the sound of my voice in fact he loves the sound of my voice so much that even if you choose to be quiet today I will bless the Lord at all times uh, and so they mess up because uh, they try to use power by uh, pedigree they they then show us another mistake in that uh, they try to tap into power by parroting somebody say parroting parroting not parenting as in a parent and a child but parenting as in repeating after somebody else and, and the Bible says that they show this in that uh, they use the term in the name of Jesus who Paul preached I'm getting better thank you in the name of Jesus you were doing real good right there uh, uh, brother sons of Sceva but they messed up when they said who Paul preached because what they do is they show us that they are leaning on a relationship that they don't have for themselves uh, they, they got the Jesus part right but they are invoking Jesus through a medium named Paul Paul has been positioned and postured as the middleman here and the problem with that is don't you remember when Jesus hung on the cross one of the lesser known or lesser mentioned passages talks about how while he was hanging when he he dies the veil in the temple was rent or torn in half meaning that there was not hallelujah there was now no more separation between us and God it meant that now we no longer had to go to a priest we no longer had to slay a turtle dove or or, or, or some other sacrifice because with his sacrifice on the cross we now could go to Directly to God but what they're doing is they're trying to get to the power in his name but they're going through Paul's relationship you know what they are they're name droppers and I don't mean to judge nobody I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings I'll speak for myself I can't stand a name dropper I don't know, you might be sitting next to one, so just look at me and blink twice. But I don't like people, or I don't like talking to people rather, that every part of the conversation is laced with, oh, you know I know so-and-so, and, -so, and I, ooh, I was just hanging out with so-and-so the other day, and yeah, I just got back from vacation with so-and-so, I just, I just saw so-and-so at the restaurant. I, I don't like a name dropper, because name droppers, my question is, what's wrong with your name that you got to use everybody else's? 
Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me in here now. Uh, I, 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 you make me nervous when you get to talking about everybody you know and everywhere you've been. And I told the earlier service that I, I remember as the host of the Young Leaders Conference, we, we had thousands and thousands of people in a convention center. And Pastor Williams, this goes to your point earlier, uh, we had all access seats, we had VIP seats, we had general seating, but it was a ticketed event. And I remember one time at the big one, uh, thousands of people in this room 49 states 22 countries and there were some people that went in and got under the rope did some kind of manipulative thing and they went up to the front of the church to the all access section yeah uh, these these are good seats these are seats where you won't miss anything and, and they're up there and one of the ushers noticed that they did not have an all access badge on and truthfully they didn't have a badge at all they confronted them in love and said hey we're so happy to have you uh, but but these seats are reserved for all access because uh, the all access people paid a certain price to sit here you didn't hear what I said they, they, they told them that the, the all access people paid a certain cost to be in these seats and, and instead of them getting up to move however they went into this long story about oh well you gotta understand Elder Moore will want me to sit here because I'm a family friend and, and I know Shirley and I, I, I know Mark Senior and I, I, I knew them, known them back to Detroit and Indianapolis and, and, and they uncle and his uncle and their cousins went to school with me. They went through all of this uh, association and name dropping. And they said, okay, now what is your name? They gave them their name. They got word to their superior who got word to their superior who came and touched me and said, hey, real quick, uh, do you want so-and-so to sit uh, in all access without the badge and without registering? And I said, who is so-and-so? Y'all didn't hear me. They said, oh, you, you, you know so-and-so. I said, no, I don't. Who? And so they said, oh, so-and-so. They know your mama, and they know your daddy, and they know your uncles, and, and they knew you ever since you was a little boy. And I said, oh, okay, that's wonderful. You go tell so-and-so that while they may know me, I don't know them. And they can't sit in seats they didn't pay for. Can I get you to look up and down your row and tell them that's how some of us are in the spirit? We're busy talking about who we know. And the question is, does God know you? Because if your Bible is right, there's a day coming when many will say, Lord, Lord we prophesied in your name Lord Lord we preached in your name we, we healed the sick in your name and you know what God's going to say depart from me you worker oh, here it is I never knew you but I'm talking to some people in here today that I believe are leaving this place with the mindset that I want God to know me why is he going to know me because I'm making up my mind I'm going to stay in his face until I get everything that God has for me because what they were trying to do was use the name like a talisman or a good luck charm but I'm here to tell you you cannot conquer with the cliche you got to know him for real and he's got to know you because the Bible says that the demons respond in verse 15 help me here he responds to him and says here it is Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you and you got to remember that demons always know who Jesus is can I remind you of Luke chapter number 8 when Jesus walks in the tomb and finds the man cunning himself living among the tombs and the Bible says that this man does not have a demon he has legions of demons a legion rather thousands of demons have occupied and tormented him but you know what happens when Jesus steps on the scene it says that the demons cry with a loud voice and tell Jesus why have you come to torment us please leave us alone why because 
because Jesus also said in Matthew 28 that he has authority over demons and I'm here to tell hey I'm here to tell somebody that there are some demons that have been messing with you because they're not scared of you but let me help you they are scared of your Jesus I feel something sneaking in here now the Bible says that they believe and they tremble and so demons know Jesus because he has authority over them but you know why they know Paul because Paul is in direct relationship with Jesus and I'm here to tell you that when you get in real relationship with him you got to understand that God gives you that same power to intimidate hell when you know who God is for real but look at what happens the Bible says they ask them who are you this is the demons question to the would-be exorcist because they can identify hear me that these sons of Sceva are outside of their spiritual jurisdiction uh, they they have watched others work miracles and cast others out but they don't have the same power that they had and so the Bible says that the demon leaves them naked and wounded because whenever you try to operate with a fake relationship dealing with a real demon he will always leave you embarrassed can I get you to touch somebody and tell them neighbor no tell them say neighbor you better hear me well today tell them there's an hour coming where we're going to see who's real and who's fake y'all not talking but I need you to tell somebody there's a day of reckoning on the way where we're going to see who had a real prayer life and who just knew song lyrics there's a day of reckoning that's on the way y'all better hear me in the Holy Ghost where we're going to be able to tell who really was fasting and who just didn't post a lunch when the church was fasting there's a day of reckoning coming where we're going to see who really has been in the presence of God and who was just going through motions because when real demons show up you can't use fake anointing to fight a real demon I wish I had somebody in here that would just make up your mind though I'm not going another day using fraudulent power but I want to have the real thing because I got some real hell at home y'all ain't talking to me I got some real warfare at my job I got some real warfare in my house I got some real warfare in my body and I don't need a fake anointing when I'm trying to cast out a real devil but I need somebody to tell your neighbor say neighbor I'm going after the real thing now tell them again say neighbor I'm going after the real thing Lord you got to help me in here today because in verse number 15 it says that they ask the question who are you but then in verse 16 they begin to attack the seven sons of Sceva because they did not have the answer to the question but I came to talk to somebody in here and tell you that you don't have to go out like the sons of Sceva did because you need to know that because they didn't have the answer that doesn't mean you don't have the answer because I want you to know the demons are still asking questions and they're saying Jesus I know they're saying Paul I know but they want to know who are you and I need you I need you I need you I need you to grab your neighbor by the hand and say name him. I'm so glad to tell you that if the demons ask me that question tell them say I have an answer because I learned last week that I'm not an orphan anymore so if the devil wants to know who I am I can stand here and tell him that I am the righteousness of God I am 
time I join out with Jesus I am seated in high places heavenly places with Christ Jesus I know who I am because I know who Jesus is I'm healthy, healed and whole I know who I am I'm the head and not the tail I know who I am I'm the lender not the bower I know who I am Man, y'all ain't come to have no church 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 But is there anybody watching on YouTube? Is there anybody watching on Facebook that'll get your sanitizer and rub it in real good? And why don't you just lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Say neighbor, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Say name. I know who I am. And here's what God told me to tell you. After the demons beat the boys that didn't know who they were, it says that everybody got news about it. It says everybody heard what happened. And here's what you gotta know today. It says they've been working in dark magic. There were witches and warlocks. They were trying to do it another way. But when they saw the difference between the real and the fake, they said, we decided we want the real thing. And they got their witches, their witches' resources. They got their spell books. They got their hexes. And they created a fire and burned all their books. Ain't the Lord all right? Because they made up their mind that we don't want anything that's counterfeit. But we only want the real thing. And I'm preaching to somebody that ought to make up your mind. I don't want the counterfeit. I only want the real thing. I'm denouncing everything that's not authentic. Because I only want what God has. I'm giving up my way. I only want what God has. I'm giving up my agenda. I only want what God has. But I got to leave y'all here. But here's what the Bible says. It says they burn their books. But here's verse 20. It says mightily grew the word of God. And the word of God, it prevailed. I'm going when I tell you that once the devil is ran out of town and ran out of your house once you get rid of all of your counterfeit your fake prayer life your fake performance you're trying to be impressive you got a promise today that it's then that the word of God is going to prevail and I stop by here on the way to Marietta to tell somebody that the word of God is going to prevail. I didn't hear nobody say nothing. I'll say it one more time. The word of God is going to prevail. What am I trying to tell you? If God said it, it will prevail. What am I trying to tell you? If God told you, it's going to happen. Let me say it like this. There shall be a performance of what God told you. If he told you you were going to be healed, the word will prevail. If he told you your child will be saved, the word will prevail. If he told you you're coming out of that, the word will prevail. Can I preach to somebody and tell you at the end of the day, heaven and earth will pass away. But my wife, I, I, 
Jesus we know Paul but who are you here's the message and I need you join hands with somebody we're gonna need each other today the seven sons of Sceva Paris are trying to walk in a deliverance ministry by association they have watched all of Paul's YouTube clips they've got all of Paul's mannerisms they've got an outfit like Paul they, they've studied his tongue so that they can roll their R's the same way he does Zayla Bays and Ishkatai's See my tie, tie, my tie. Got all of them, all of the performance down, like Paul. But they think that they're okay because they have power by pedigree. We're the sons of the priest. But the problem with that is you can't cast out demons using somebody else's consecration. I don't, I don't mean no harm, I don't mean no disrespect, but I don't care who your mama is. I don't care who your daddy is. Come here, you gotta know God for yourself. Can, can I say it like this? He wants to be your personal Jesus. It's almost all the praying that's ever done for us is done by somebody else. And God is saying, I wanna hear the sound of your voice. They've been messed up because they think they can have power through parroting. We're going to say what he said. So they get, they get ready. They've been practicing in the mirror. And they find, watch this, they find a demon. Now, I want to say this because you got to be careful what you ask for. Oh, no, no. You, you better hear me. You better hear me. I'm talking to all of you, you know, parking lot prophets. I'm talking to all of you. Instagram apostles up on TikTok live at 2 in the morning prophesying. I'm seeing something. I'm seeing something. Oh, no, you ain't saying nothing. Squinting, asking for cash apps. You ain't saying nothing. I want to talk to y'all because you keep chasing demons, you're going to find one. And the question is, once you get it, what you going to do with it? Because here's what I need. Here, here's the takeaway today. 
You cannot fight a real devil with fake power. They get what they're asking for. They find one. And they go to their performance in the name of Jesus who Paul preached about. I've made Paul the middleman now. And the demon stops demoning long enough. Demon says, in the name of Jesus that Paul preached, he says, well, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But Mr. Big Stuff, who do you think you are? Bible says, think about this. I, I've, I've overlooked this all the times I've read this. They don't even give an answer. Can, can, can we sit there for a moment? Who do you think you are? Who are you? Jesus, I know Paul, I don't know who are you. The text documents no response. Can I submit for our consideration? Maybe the sons of Sceva were so busy studying somebody else. They didn't know who they were either. You're holding that hand and that person whose hand you're holding is asking a question right now. Who am I? And here's what God told me to tell you. Relationship with him is what reveals identity within you. Let me say it better. You don't really know who you are until you know who he is. All right, I'm out of time, but can I prove it to you? Don't you remember when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? They spoke up. Well, some say you're John the Baptist and some say you're Isaiah, some say you're Elias. He says, yeah, that, that's great. Who do you say that I am? Which one of the disciples responded? Which one? Which one? Which one? Some of y'all are saying Peter responded. He says, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. I want to tell you though, if you said Peter, you close, but you ain't all the way there. Because the Bible says it was Simon that responded. Wow. Wow. Simon says, I know who you are. And when Simon identifies Jesus, Jesus then identifies Simon. He says, no more are you Simon, but now I call you Peter. Because once you identify who he is, he reveals who you are. Squeeze that hand and say, neighbor, I'm about to turn from Simon into Peter. Because he's showing me who I am. Who are you? I know who your mama is. I know who your daddy is. But in the spirit, who are you? I'm giving open for prayer. You're getting ready to come. There's about to be a strong move of God. It ain't even going to take long. But I want to tell you, in the spirit, some of you all are nothing more than elementary school safety patrolmen. I'm not here to insult you. I need you to hear me though. In the spirit, you got your safety sash on. You got your sign, your little vest. And you know what some of you are doing? Some of you all with your elementary school safety patrol vest on are trying to do drug bust over here on Cleveland Avenue. <laughs> Knocking on crack house about freeze in the name of the law. And you don't understand, we gonna see you on the news. Cause you are out of your spiritual jurisdiction. You can't fight a real devil with a fake power. But here's the good news for you and the hand you're holding. The good news is the real thing is available to you right now. God wants to show you who you are. Because let me help you, the demons are going to try you. They're going to ask questions. And you can't get into a fight with the devil talking about who your auntie was and talking about, well, I heard someone so say, no, no, no. You got to know him for yourself. And the God of the Bible is here and he wants to know you. All you got to do is come meet him.
You've held that hand long enough to pray for that hand. I want you to release it now because somebody needs to get out of their seat and come to this altar 